Morning, Isabel. Good morning. Well, it's no surprise, really, is it? It's just, a, in a sense, a numbers game. You know, if you continue to allow literally thousands of people to come over in certain weeks, there are going to be uh, fatalities. And this is what's happening. And, you know, this uh, count of uh, tragic drownings in the tra in the channel continues to mount. And all the while, uh, the government has no plan whatsoever to deal with it. Oh, Isabel, the government says it has a plan. It's going to tighten the NCA. It's going to bring all the uh, agencies together. It's going to make sure that people don't set off here in the first place. It's not working. I mean, I thought that Keir Starmer was going to smash the vile gangs. Well, so far, I see no evidence of any gangs having been smashed. And as far as I know, Yvette Cooper has yet to find anyone uh, to head up her special super duper um, new border, whatever it's called, command and control centre. Who cares? Because it's not doing anything yet. And it seems that no one wants that job because it's a complete hospital pass because you can't solve this issue uh, by tackling it from the end of the gangs themselves you know mm. uh, also a lot of talk about let's try to stop the supply of boats i mean that's patently ridiculous you know most of these uh, come from china china's ability to manufacture these things is not going to be in any way hampered uh, by a few uh, suppliers being targeted it's just not, not going to happen is it is it is there a sense that the government doesn't have a direction that's the question i've been asking all morning does the government actually have a sense of direction because as we know just going back to the immigration thing so they abandon Rwanda they close the baby Stockholm they grant an effective amnesty to what 120,000 people and now Starmer says he is opening the door to sending migrants to Albania this is based on what Italy is doing and seeing great success in g removing their migration problem what's going on I mean, the Albania thing's been around for a while, hasn't it? Yeah. I remember reading about that about a year ago. Well, I mean, what's going on is that Sakir Starmer and his Home Secretary are bumping up against a cold, hard reality, which is that they're in charge now and simply harping on about smashing the gangs is not going to stop the flow of people. So I imagine that there is some degree of panic in Number 10 and in the Home Office about what they do, because clearly their, their great big idea of tackling it from the uh, supply side, the supply of the service, isn't going to work. So they're now thinking, what else can we do? Uh, because each and every week more people are coming over. Uh, but as in, in terms of do they have a sense of direction generally, I mean, I fear they do have a sense of direction, this government. It's just completely the opposite one to that in which most of the nation wants to go. Mm. Let's move on and talk about Ukraine, shall we? Because, again, this is about showing leadership, isn't it? And five former defence secretaries and an ex-prime minister have urged Sir Keir Starmer to allow Ukraine to use its long-range storm shadow missiles to strike inside Russia without US backing. This is the crucial bit. Grant Schatz, Ben Wallace, Gavin Williamson, Penny Morden, Liam Fox, Boris Johnson, saying that any further delay will embolden President Putin. Now, I, I think this is a tricky call because obviously these are UK-made weapons and striking inside Russia may well be seen to be antagonistic. That, uh, there again, of course, Ukraine has those weapons, and so it would be a Ukrainian decision so to do. But Putin is a bully. We talked about that earlier. He needs to be taken down. Well, it's a little bit more complex in terms of these weapons because they are made by Britain, uh, France and Italy, uh, but they rely on American GPS. So they kind of need um, a bit of international backup um, in order to be able to, to deploy the weapons. And these five former defence secretaries, they're all uh, ex-conservative defence secretaries, are making the point that Britain has shown fantastic leadership on Ukraine and really stood apart uh, from so much of the rest of the world. You know, we stuck our necks out on this under the leadership particularly of Boris Johnson and went full square behind uh, Zelensky and his mission to maintain the integrity of uh, Ukraine's borders. And now it's all gone on a lot longer than anyone anticipated. That's um, uh, thanks to Ukraine and the great nation uh, and the great national effort there to, to stave off 
the Russian threat. Nobody anticipated that they would be able to hold out this long. And as a result, a lot of things are going on, not least weariness on the part of voters, uh, whether in America or indeed the UK, who see that huge amounts of our money is being spent on this effort and have forgotten slightly why we have to keep going, mm. which is less unless we can uh, help Ukraine win, then tyrants like President Putin will continue their ambitions and who knows who or what could be next. So this is a slightly complicated debate because of all the different countries involved in the actual weapons system. Uh, but as for the suggestion that if those weapons are fired into Russia, that somehow an attack on Russia, um, I think you could equally turn it around and say, well, it's necessary to do that to attack the bases from which Russia is attacking Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, let's also talk about Labour changing tack again. Ministers are planning to back away from a total ban on the sale of new petrol powered cars by allowing hybrid vehicles to remain on the market until 2035. Now, you may remember in their manifesto, they said they were going to ban all this by 2030. Ooh, here we go, slipping agenda. Yeah, but they're going so hard on so many other aspects of net zero, aren't they? Yeah. So I, I don't see much rowing back generally here. I mean, again, they're bumping up against some hard realities, which is that there's a real problem with the um, supply of electric vehicles. Manufacturers are realising that consumers are still quite nervous of buying these things because of issues around the range of the vehicles, um, issues around whether there are suitable charging points, are there enough charging points? And bluntly, um, the cars are so expensive still. To get an all-electric vehicle is still quite a luxury. Um, certainly, I love the idea of having one, but I don't think they're particularly affordable. And where I live, there aren't a load of charging points anywhere near. And anyone who doesn't have, you know, a big garden or a driveway or whatever is reliant on public charging points. And there just isn't the provision uh, in a lot of parts of the country. No. Can I just ask you about this? Um, I, I mentioned it to the Future Politics panel. All of my friends, this is an article written in one of the newspapers, all of my friends are leaving the UK. We're not talking about wealthy people here. We're talking about middle earners, people who are sick and tired of the direction of this country are you surprised not in the slightest i mean basically pretty much everybody i know knows someone who is thinking of leaving is trying to put uh, plans in place to leave uh, or wants to leave but can't and look it gets to a point where people just feel it doesn't stack up for them anymore you know if you're ambitious you're aspirational you're earning decent money you've got a good career ahead of you you're just looking at the amount that you're taxed you're looking at the amount you're going to be taxed you're looking at the ruinous cost of everything and the way that middle earners and as you say we're not talking about multi-millionaires here and this is what should worry the government the most it's the fact that there are people who are you know doing well but they're not they're not super rich and they are thinking of getting out or trying to get out because they feel that life will be easier better um, more rewarding elsewhere because they are absolutely sick of being used as a, as a giant human cash point isabel always good to talk to you isabel oakshot there talks international editor